The Goat House is back. While we are in week 10, I'm here with the biggest winners and losers, basically the teams that impressed me the most and disappointed the most in my opinion. Working on a mock draft for this week. Also, one of the next videos will be grades for every single team for week 10. Well, let's take a look at what I got in this video. Let's just start with the biggest winner, the most impressive team. Maybe not even just this week or over the recent weeks, but definitely on this week, dominating the Jets. The Cardinals dominating the Jets 31 to 6. The game really was never close. But what I love about the Cardinals, you know, not only are they winning, not only they're actually consistent, they are very, very clearly getting better each week. And the big thing here, and multiple big things, the biggest thing here is they are showing they can win in multiple different ways. You know, I'm still not sold on the defense being a big-time defense. They were big-time in this game, and the Jets kind of caught fire at the end of the last game against a really good, well-coached defense of the Texans, and the Cardinals shut it down. They're showing the defense is getting better better, but on offense, they can win throwing the ball because Kyler Murray is throwing the ball as consistently as anyone out there, as good as anyone out there, and they can win just being more physical than their opponent running the football, but... Trey McBride's a stud. Marvin Harrison Jr. making plays as well. James Conner. I mean, they're even getting Trey Benson going as well. Uh, I love the coaching, understanding your opponent. The Jets have been a little iffy with uh, – they're good on defense. They're been a little iffy with scrambling quarterbacks or just running quarterbacks in general. So what they do? They made sure Kyler Murray was a part of this game, as he should be. Take advantage of the players, the talent you have, and take advantage of the weaknesses of your opponent, even though sometimes there's not a good uh, – like a big list of weaknesses looking at the Jets' defense. So I love the coaching staff. They're getting better. The players are getting better. But the you know both sides of the ball, the defense, which a lot doubted, they're getting better. But the big thing is, it's very clear. Not only they're getting better, but they're showing they can. Act. There's different ways they can win. It's not a team I would want to play right now. Cardinals are rolling, and the Jets obviously come in as losers. They played the Cardinals. I mean, yeah, they got their ass kicked. You know, embarrassed. Obviously, nothing going for them. I mean, Brees Hall had some good moments. Other than that, nothing going for them at all. Rodgers was not good. The protection wasn't good. Felt like he was trying to force feed Devonte Adams. He didn't have a great game. So, uh, yeah, and another you know big picture here. What they went again. Once again, they went all in for this year, and they're getting embarrassed like this. So, it's just a major, major failure for this year. And the defense has been getting worse. We've been talking about that. They've been giving up big plays. I know they got after Stroud last week, but. Been getting up, giving up bad plays. They're getting out physical on the ground. You know, Sauce isn't playing nearly as good as he can this year. So, uh, you know, they're getting beat in multiple different ways. So, you can't even rely on the defense, to, you know, to help you win a game anymore. So, uh, everything's south for the Jets. And you thought, oh, maybe, you know, what if, if after they beat the Texans, even though it was a disaster in the first half against them, too. So, it's a rough go for the Jets still. The New England Patriots have to be a winner after they dominate the Chicago Bears. I know the Bears aren't much of anything. They've really been struggling lately, but they've been on a road streak, and they seem like a different team at home. I mean, beating the Rams, beating other teams, dominating some teams at home, and they go back home, tough place to play, and the Patriots just dominate them. Now, how about that defense? And is it anything major? Usually I put teams in this video that are they get a win, and it's huge for the rest of the season. You know, not necessarily that for the Patriots, but it shows some good signs for the future, uh, obviously, because they have a lot of young players that stepped up and Gerard Mayo being able to keep these guys going, the young talent and being able to win with defense. And a lot of those guys are going to be on the team for the future. And they held on to some of those guys, so the guys that are be part of the future at the deadline. Guys like guys like Kyle Duggar, obviously, but uh, who is a, is a been a big name, but. Um, you know, people call about him, but a little off topic. Just guys that they're going to stick around, and some some guys, you know, some of those pass rushers, uh, defensive linemen played very well in this game, which was huge. Uh, and the offense did just just enough, and it was a big highlighted battle between Drake May and Caleb Williams. Did Drake May light it up? Not really, but again, shows his toughness and has that clutch, you know, big play ability and outplayed Caleb Williams for sure. And you can definitely take a look at these teams on paper, and you can say that may, maybe uh, Drake May doesn't have the best sporting cast, but guys are getting better. You know, Polk things have been down with him, but he finds the end zone. So just positivity, and there's a lot of things in here that that are good signs for the future. So that's why. The Patriots make this list a, a game that really people didn't give them a chance to win in Chicago. Another big winner is the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, did it did it look pretty? I mean, it looked flashy at times, that's for sure. But it wasn't super pretty. But, man, they beat a very hot, good team in the Washington Commanders in D.C. And they just move on to 7-2, and two, which is absolutely huge for the Pittsburgh Steelers, obviously. Look like a legit team, especially since Russ took over. The offense is a problem. George Pickens is a problem. They get Mike Williams going at the end there. 
Running game could have been a little better. I mean, Warren actually got a little bit going a little bit more than Najee, but he had a costly fumble. You know, but the way to fight back and get back in this game where it felt like they weren't out of it, but it felt like things weren't trending in the right direction for them. I mean, absolutely huge. The defense stepping stepping up in clutch moments. Preston Smith even got in there for a sack. Uh, you know, his first game playing, and some of the other guys that teams trade for aren't playing. And hey, look, Preston Smith gets a sack. Mike Williams gets a big touchdown. So it, it just talk. It just speaks about the several things, but really just the culture that Mike Tomlin has over there. I mean, guys step in, they can succeed right away, but that that you know, not being afraid to have those guys step in and play and they're very confident with them and anyone that steps on the field for the Pittsburgh Steelers is probably my favorite thing right there because all these guys aren't playing. They just got traded to these teams. All these guys even, uh, you know, thought that area Smith to play for the Lions on Sunday Night Football would be an example and there's several other examples, but um, I love that. It just speaks about Mike Tomlin and the Steelers and what they have going there. Anyone can step in and help them. Uh, they put them in position to succeed. So, I mean, just a ma- major statement win, even though it wasn't fully pretty, even though, again, it was flashy. Uh, watch out for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've looked like this at times in the past, and they're let down the playoffs. It does feel a little different. You know, are they a deep run team? And that, that's a different debate, maybe, but they're good. I wouldn't, my, I wouldn't want my team to play them, right? My team has the same record. I would not want to play the Steelers right now. I don't think we would beat the Steelers. So that's kind of how I feel about them. So a uh, big, big uh, even though a one-point win, big win for them against the Commanders. Let's rattle off some losers. The Giants in Germany, very winnable game. I've been saying the Giants aren't a good team, but they're better in their record. They put a losing streak on, but they've been losing close games, playing teams tough to good teams. They go and play the Panthers, and they lose. I mean, you could argue they outplayed them, or they could have won if it wasn't for red zone turnovers, the fumble in overtime. Uh, you know, things weren't going their way and they were still in the game, but they couldn't find a way to win. Daniel Jones, obviously an issue. It's just, it's just not great. You know, the whole situation, um, you know, not a great year to have to be needing to draft a quarterback unless you have the first, you finish the season with the first overall pick, which maybe they're shooting for. Then you have a decision with Brian Dayball, which deep down, I believe he could be a good coach, but it, it's a gamble to keep him. It's a gamble to let him go. It's just a loss like this, the sloppiness, the, the loss, how, how much of a mess it is losing games they shouldn't lose it, it it causes harm even for the future and you know bringing up yeah quarterback situation and what do you do at the coaching position it's 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 a brutal situation to be in for sure so this is a game they should not lose even with the even with the mistakes well they they total up you know they tally up once you get to the end it's like all right you're going to lose the game with the you know it's the topper the last one was the topper well, red zone interceptions really is what did, what did them in, but um, definitely a game they should win. It, it just brings up a bunch of questions about them and their future, so it's more than just a loss to the Panthers in Germany. Chicago Bears, a major, major loser. I mean, going back to Chicago, I mean, major difference between them home and away, at least we thought, and going back home against the Patriots, who were one of the worst teams, just lost to the Titans last week, got outplayed by the Titans. you think the Bears, uh, you know, could – could figure this out at home and no chance, zero chance, three points. Caleb Williams was really bad. The offensive line's bad. I thought Williams was worse than the offensive line, but uh, there's not a lot of chemistry. There's no one leading this team. Um, the defense looks a little more vulnerable. But it's really not their fault. They're on the field constantly, but they do look a little more vulnerable, but it's again, not their fault. It just looks uh, dysfunctional and there's a lot of issues and there's a lot of things we should not be seeing from players that you know, we should be seeing DJ Moore's confidence higher. We should be see we should see him making bigger plays. We should see Cole Komet more involved, making big plays. Caleb Williams, he, his big thing at USC was extending plays. He is doing the opposite of that right now. So we're we're seeing opposite of what we should. Even though he's a rookie, and yeah, mistakes are fine. He's not even really making like turnover. He's making mistakes of not keeping plays alive and just standing still in the pocket, taking sacks, no awareness, spinning and you know, running in the sacks. Uh, like I rather see him throw three interceptions and make plays 100% right now. I rather see what Drake May's doing for sure, you know, for sure. So a lot of issues here. Eberflus has got to go, even though I guess he doesn't have a ton of control on the offense, and that's the main issue. But he's there's, I don't think he's leading the team right. It's just brutal. I mean, we thought maybe the Bears were something when they started to put some wins together, and you're going, can they beat good teams? Can they win away from home? Uh, and then they go away from home. They start losing. They can't beat the good teams, and they go home and f- you know figure they could turn it around. And no, they can't lose. You start looking back in those games. They kind of squeak by. Look at the Titans game. A lot of luck in that game, week one. So it's just still not a good team. After a loss like this, it kind of feels like it's uh, it, it's it, this this season's kind of a wash. Which is, I I know they're a team of the future, but they made trades like they made, they were kind of half in winning right now, and they're half in like rebuilding. 
Uh, so there's a lot to complain about with uh, behind the scenes with this team right now. And, and a loss like this kind of speaks it. You know, it kind of shows us that. So it's bigger than just a loss at home in the Patriots, kind of similar than with, with the Giants situation. So um, definitely a tough one for the Chicago Bears. And the Colts, I almost didn't put them in this video for, you know, being a big loser because they, they it was a winnable game. They moved the ball. Jonathan Taylor moved the ball for sure. They made big plays. Alec Pierce was really solid. But you know, a winnable game, but it was just kind of taken away because the turnovers and maybe not every single one was on Flacco, but right off the bat, it was, uh, you know, you spotted the Bills points and you'd think Anthony Richardson wins them this game. And it's debatable last week. I did absolutely nothing with Flacco on offense. I do think last week, Richardson probably would have turned it over. He would have turned it over this game too. And they still could have won. I mean, Flacco already did turn it over. So, you know, I understand if Flacco may be a game of better chance to win right now, and you actually right now could de debate against that. I don't know if I debate against the original decision, like the thinking that Flacco give, Flacco give him a chance to win right now, but you still don't take Anthony Richardson out. You still, what do you think, you're winning a Super Bowl if you put Flacco in? You still develop the rookie, even if he has bad games, give him the learning experiences. I think they would have, they actually could have won this game, believe it or not, against the Buffalo Bills, because... There, yeah, there probably still would have been the turnovers. Maybe not as much. Maybe the same amount. But there would have been much bigger plays, even though there was bigger play, big plays here. So, um, yeah, I just think this team's done a bad job, and it shows in a game. Like, a lot of the losers, common theme here. It wasn't really just about the single game, but things are being more clear and obvious, and it just makes you question the future. But, you know, about the, the front office, the, coach, the, front office, the coaching staff, the decision-making here. So... Uh, very winnable game against the Buffalo Bills, so uh, that's it's it's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one. The Flacco uh, experiment, I guess when he it wasn't really their their experiment when he got thrown in there, he was good. But since they started him, it's not going that great, obviously.